Hello there, and welcome back to my workshop. This is Tool Tote Show number three. I'm making a tool tote out of reclaimed American chestnut, and I've joined it with compound angled dovetails. So last time we sawed and fitted the dovetails, and on this show what we're going to do, first thing, is to plane down these corners so that they're flat and level with a horizontal surface, that is the top edge and the bottom edge, and then we're going to make the handle. So uh, first things first, let's pull this apart, and we're going to plane down those edges. Don't like to do this too many times. It's kind of hard on the dovetails, but uh, I think we'll be okay. We'll start with this one here, and I've already marked this here so I know the corners that I want to take down, and uh, I want to make sure I get the right corners. That would be a bad thing right now. Mm -hmm. So those are marked, and uh, let me show you my planes. I'm using two planes. They're both number fours, but this one here has a heavily cambered iron in it. It's an eight inch radius. And this one here is set up for smoothing. Now I could use this plane for what I'm doing right now, just this plane, but uh, since I have this set for a thicker shaving and a, it's kind of like my scrub plane, I'm going to use these to get started and then I'll finish up with my, my smoothing plane. So, okay, I'm going to need my glasses, of course, for this. Mm -hmm. Are we ready? I'm going to go the other way, grain-wise. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, we've got our bevels put on our edges, top and bottom, and we'll fine tune that after the glue up. But now it's time to move along to our handle. Remember our handle here, it's very uh, typical of a tray like this. It's got sloped sides and then a horizontal point here, and I'm going to make a cutout here so I can use it as a handle. So the question becomes, how do I lay this out? And it's actually quite simple. What I did was I picked a point along this edge here and this top inside edge here. 
Now all of these sides are on a 60 degree from horizontal tilt. So if I draw a line from that point at 60 degrees and I go down like this and then I draw another line at 60 degrees down like this, they're going to intersect at a point down here at a 60 degree angle. So that means there's a 60 degree angle here, a 60 degree angle here, and over here, and that makes it an equilateral triangle. Now, if I uh, do that, I can then draw an arc that goes from here to here using that intersected line that I just showed you. And if I d divide that arc into thirds, one point here and one third point here, and connect those points, what I wind up with is the shape I'm looking for right there. So you can see how that goes. Now I can show you better on a piece of cardboard, so I'm going to do that. It's pretty, pretty easy to lay out actually. So what I did was I measured, first of all, between this top inside edge here and this one over here, and I set my beam compass, and that's what this is. It's a ruler with two trammel points put on it, and they are set at that distance exactly. You can see it here. So I have that set, and now what I'm going to do is use a piece of cardboard to demonstrate. Here we go here. It's going to set our trout our trammel points here and make a mark there and then I'm also going to make a mark down here and then I reset my beam compass and make a mark here and make a mark there and that's my center point for my arc kind of like this and set this here and then I draw my arc between those two points. Like that. Now, if I divide this arc into thirds, and I have another compass here that's already set, preset, dividing it into thirds, and I mark those points. Then I connect those points with a straight edge. Then I extend these lines down to my center point like that. It's an approximation for now. And then all I have to do is set the width and to make that quick I'm just going to use my cardboard cutout here and use that as a reference. There we are there. What we wind up with is the shape we're after. Now that's a whole lot easier doing it on a piece of cardboard. It's a little tricky when I do that on my narrow piece of wood for the handle but I taped that board down so it wouldn't slide on my bench top. And I also taped down another board of equal thickness to use as my pivot point. And what I came up with is this right here. And I've just sawn that close to the line, but not right on the line. And I know you can't see my lines here. They're really, really tough to see. I tried one of those uh, white marking pencils, but this open poured grain really uh, made an imprecise line. So I just gently scribe those lines and now what I'm going to do 
is plane down to them, right to them, with my hand plane, and get those just the way I want them. Okay, I think this is set. We'll soon find out. there. And here is our handle, planed to size. And what I did here was I added tenons on the end. I laid these out. You can see this notch here. That's the tenon that will go into a mortise on the end of my tray. Now we're going to move on to the cutout here for the handle. But this wood is chestnut, and chestnut is very splitty. So uh, I thought maybe it's not the best choice of wood for the handle, because it's going to get a lot of use and wear and tear. So what I did was I added two screws coming in from the bottom edge, one here and one over here. And that's just to uh, reduce the possibility that this will split off uh, during handling. So uh, I'll show you here on the bottom. There's the plugs where I plug the holes where the screws go. And I think that's just going to reinforce the handle. So now, let's talk about that cutout. Let's have a look at our pine handle. Remember the pine tray? Well, here it is, and that's the cutout. So I experimented and got that handle about the size I want it to be. It fits my grip nicely. But why is this so long? This cutout is rather long. It's twice as wide as my hand. Well, when I load the tray up with tools, it's probably not going to be perfectly balanced. It'll probably be heavier on one end than the other, and this allows me to hold the tray by its center of gravity so it doesn't tilt as I'm carrying it. It's not absolutely essential, but I think it's a nice feature to have on this tray. So that's why I did that. Okay, well let's start uh, cutting this out. I'm going to use my brace and bit and then a coping saw to, uh, to do the rough work. So. Let's get started with that. I will need my glasses. And I have this already marked. Clamp this good. 
Okay. How are we doing there? Good. Now, I have a little hole here to get started. And I don't mm -hmm. want to mistake a wormhole for the hole I need for my, my bit here. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. Don't want to go too far down. This one. I think that's far enough. Let's have a look and see. One there's good. That one there's good. I'm going to mark these. Because they look just like wormholes. Looks pretty good. Am I holding it steady enough? <laughs> yes. All right. Now, I need to mark this for my coping saw, which I'm going to be using next. And I think the best way to do that is just use some tape here to uh, show where my lines are going to be. Sit there. Okay, now I'm going to use my coping saw to saw most of it out. And then we'll finish up with a rasp. Here's my coping saw. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, well, not so bad. Got a fair amount to remove there. It was a little bit, oh, yeah, a lot to remove. But uh, I think I'm going to be able to do that actually pretty easily. Let me show you what we're doing for rasps here. I'm going to be using what's called a float. It's uh, kind of like a file, but different in that the teeth are very, very sharp and they're deeper and uh, larger. And uh, boy, you can really feel it when you grip this with your hand, you can feel how sharp that is. And it really does a good job of removing material and it doesn't load up like a regular file does. The uh, wood chips come right out. Uh, another thing you can use, and I've used this over the years, is this thing. This is a little bit different. It looks like a bunch of hacksaw blades stuck together. And it's actually got a coarse side over here and a fine side over here with higher TPI. And it works pretty well. Now this is a replacement blade for a gadget that they sell that uh, holds this and it actually has two handles. But I just use a pair of ice grips and that works I think a little bit better and I can save myself some money. So, uh, but it works very well. So let's get started here and uh, see how quickly I can remove this material. Okay, I think that's got it. I'll do a little more sanding later on, but for now I think that's going to be fine. Let's get the tape off of here. There we go. Looking pretty good. Now let's talk about these tenons here. You'll notice this tenon is more of a parallelogram. It actually is on an angle. And that means that the mortise has to be the same shape. And I'll show you the mortise here. You can see the mortise has a ramp on it and also it's cut back in here so that it fits together as it should. Put it together. And there we go. And I'll put the other one in. There's that one. Okay, so there it is. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, let's put this together and have a look. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Okay. And there we go. Okay. What do you think? I think it looks starting to look like a tool tote. Mm -hmm. So there we are. And this is as far as we're going to go on this show. When we come back in show number four, what we're going to do is glue this up. We're going to make a, a base for it, a bottom and then we're going to apply a finish. But before we go, there's something I want to share with you. Uh, just, before, just after we uploaded show number two, Jonine and I headed for Suffolk, England, and neither one of us had ever been to England before. And we did some backpacking and hiking and going from village to village, and we had a great time. And uh, a day or two before we headed out there, I remembered that a YouTube acquaintance of mine, his name is Clint Rose, of Timber Anew 
lived in Suffolk. So I sent him an email and told him where we were going to be. And it uh, turns out he's about 10 minutes away from one of the villages that we were going to visit. So we met in a pub and over a couple of pints of ale, the three of us uh, got to know each other and meet in person. And it was one of the highlights of our trip. So uh, it was a lot of fun. But uh, I want to show you this. This was really kind of cool. At the end of the evening, before, uh, before we went on our way, Clint presented us with a couple of gifts. And here they are. Look at this. Mm -hmm. These pens are hand carved. This one is cherry. This one's maple. And normally you would use a lathe and turn them, but he carved them by hand. And that's not easy to do to get them just right. And I thought they were really cool. So I just wanted to share that with you and also uh, thank Clint for that uh, beautiful gift. It's kind of the cool thing about the technology we have these days that we can share the things that we're doing. We can connect with other woodworkers out there and, uh, and make friends all over the world. So uh, anyway, that's the show uh, for this time around. In show number four, like I said, we're going to be uh, finishing up this project. And uh, until then, as always, thanks for stopping by and see you next time. Wasn't that great?